Today we're going to talk about the muscular system. In our body, there are over 600 muscles that make up the muscular system. Muscles are bundles of muscle fibers held together by connective tissue. So characteristics of muscles, we have excitability, contractibility, extensibility, and elasticity. So excitability, this is muscles respond to a stimulus such as a nerve impulse. This is the muscle's ability to be able to have a reaction that is caused by the stimulus. So a reaction could be contractibility or muscle fibers that are stimulated by nerves become short and thick. So whenever your nerves tell your, for instance here, your biceps to contract, it becomes short and thick, causing movement. So the opposite is extensibility. This is the ability of the muscles to stretch. So the opposite reaction would be when your biceps here contracts, your triceps, which is on the back of your muscle or back of your arm, is extended. So the extensibility of that muscle happens whenever the opposite muscle is contracted. So then after both of those muscles relax, Elasticity, this allows the muscles to return to its original shape after it has contracted or stretched. So we have different types of muscles. We're going to talk about cardiac, visceral or smooth, and skeletal. So cardiac, break the word down, cardi, heart, referring to the heart. So these form the walls of the heart and contracts to circulate blood. These muscles are involuntary, meaning you do not voluntarily tell your heart to contract every beat of every minute. Your brain tells it to do it, it just does it repeatedly unless there's a problem. Next we have visceral or smooth muscles. These are found in the internal, again visceral, viscer meaning internal organs, AL pertaining to, so they are found in the internal organs of the body. So lungs, intestines, eyes, inside blood vessels, anywhere any part of your internal organs that have muscles, those are considered visceral muscles. So these are also involuntary, meaning you do not readily tell your stomach to contract or your intestines to contract to move your food through it. Your body, sorry, your brain will just tell those to do it. They're involuntary. Next we have skeletal. Skeletal muscles are attached to bones and cause the body movement. These are voluntary, voluntary muscles. You can voluntarily tell your arm to contract, bice curl that biceps, pick up your pencil, hold your cup. You are voluntarily telling those muscles to contract. All right, so the function of the skeletal muscles, we have a couple of them. First one is it attaches to bones to provide voluntary movement. So they produce heat and energy from the body or for the body. So maintenance of homeostasis, helping to keep normal body temperature helps maintain posture, and also protects internal organs. So these are four functions of the skeletal muscles. So how are skeletal muscles attach to bone? We have either have tendons, fascia, origin, and insertion. So tendons, what are those? Those are tough connective tissue cords. So for example, you have your Achilles tendon. So tendons are connected from bone to muscle. So at the end of your, say your gastrocnemius, which is your calf muscle, will attach your Achilles tendon. Achilles tendon will stretch down to your calcaneus, which is your heel bone, and attach down there to allow for movement. So whenever your calf muscle contracts, this tendon, which does not stretch, will simply pull up, pull on your calcaneus, causing your foot to point. Next we have fascia. Fascia are tough sheet-like membrane covering and protecting the tissue. So for example, deep muscles in the back are examples of fascia, kind of surround it to give it, um, to give it some movement, to allow the muscles to move. Next we have origin and insertion. First we're going to talk about origin. So origin is the end of the muscle that's not, that does not move when attached to the bone. So for example, your origin will be up here. So this part of, the, of this muscle will not move whenever it is contracted. So then the opposite side of the muscle will be your insertion. So this is the end of the muscle that'll, that moves when the muscle contracts. So for example, down here, when your biceps is contracted, the nerves are stimulating the muscle, tells it to contract. The origin, which is up here, does not move. This part of the muscle does not move. So when it contracts, it'll shorten up this way, 
causing your insertion to pull on whatever bone it's attached to to create movement. So we have different types of muscle movements, which we talked a little bit about during our skeletal unit. So first we have abdu ab sorry, adduction and abduction. So first is adduction, so this is moving body parts towards the midline. So again, thinking about adding, ADD, adduction, moving it towards the midline, adding it to the midline. And then its opposite will be abduction, so AB, abducting it. If something is being abducted, it's being taken away. So if you are moving a body part in a muscle in the abduction movement, you're moving a body part away from the midline. Next is flexion and extension. Flexion is decreasing the angle between two bones or bending a body part. So flexion would be taking your hip and moving it up, decreasing this angle. And then extension would be the opposite, would be swinging your leg back, increasing the angle between two bones. Next we have rotation. So turning a body part around its own axis. For, so for example, turning the head from side to side, shaking your head, no. That is an example of rotation. So muscle tone, this is a state of readiness to act. So how toned is your muscle? How ready is it to act? So if we have three different terms we're going to talk about. We have atrophy, contracture, and foot drop. So atrophy, this is muscles shrink in size when not used for a long time. At A means away from, trophy meaning growth, so away from growth meaning they're shrinking. So for example, this is a normal calf muscle or your gastrocnemius. And this is a picture of a calf muscle or your gastrocnemius that has atrophied, meaning it has gotten smaller. This typically happens whenever you have an injury, you're unable to move the muscle for long periods of time, not able to work it out, that kind of thing the muscle will become smaller and shrink in size due to lack of movement. Next is contracture. This is lack of use. can also cause a severe tightening of a flexor muscle resulting in the bending of a joint. So for example here in the picture, your hip is straight and then hip is bent. Whenever there is a contracture of your flexor muscle, flexor, remember flexing is decreasing the angle, so that muscle becomes stuck or tightened to the point where you are unable to bend your hip, causing it to contract and staying contracted. Next is foot drop. This is a common contracture where the feet fall outward. So again, whenever you walk forward, like or typically walk, like in uh, B here, your toes are kind of pulled up. You go, you know, heel to toe. But as shown here in A, whenever you would pick up your foot and you had foot drop, your foot simply drops. You're unable to hold it up in a normal walking stance. Next, we're going to talk about muscle diseases and abnormal conditions. We're going to talk about muscular dystrophy, myasthenia gravis, and muscle spasms and strains. So the first one we're going to talk about is muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is an inherited disease leading to chronic progressive muscle atrophy. Usually appears in early childhood resulting in early death. So this is a con condition in which the muscles, month by month and year by year, get weaker and weaker. Because this disability gradually gets worse, we say it is a progressive disease. Most often affects boys, often brothers or male relatives will have the same problem. First signs typically appear, appear between the ages of 3 and 5. Child may seem awkward or clumsy whenever they begin to walk. They a lot of times will start walking on their tiptoe because they're unable to pull their feet flat when, like in the normal walking motion. They, also, they oftentimes run kind of strangely or fall often due to the muscles becoming weakened. So they progressively get worse, worse and worse over the years, first affecting the feet, front of the thighs, hips, belly, shoulders, and elbows, and later on affecting hands, face, and the neck muscles. Most children become unable to walk by age 10 or they develop a very severe curve of the spine. And then the heart and breathing muscles become weak as well, as it's progressive. So the child usually dies or do not live past the age of 20 due to heart failure or pneumonia. The heart is a muscle and that will progressively become weak as well. Typically is what the children or the boys typically um, die from. Next is myasthenia gravis. This is a chronic disease where nerve impulses are not properly transmitted to muscles. So it leads to paralysis while being paralyzed, meaning the muscles don't work. 
So possibly an autoimmune disease, meaning that it might possibly be your own immune system breaking down. Next we have muscle spasms or cramps, which is sudden painful involuntary contractions, usually in the legs and feet, which can result from exertion, low electrolyte levels, or poor circulation. We may have muscle strain. This is the overstretching of or injury of a muscle or tendon. Symptoms are myalgia or muscle pain, swelling, and limited muscle. The hamstrings and quad your quadriceps muscle sets are particularly at risk for muscle strains because they cross the body at the hip and the knee joints. They are typically used in high speed activities such as track and field, uh, football, basketball, soccer. So they have a very high probability of becoming strained. And this will conclude our muscular system.